Hi everybody. I've never actually played these games before, but I just recently got into them because there was a sale on GOG.com. Stands for Good Old Games. And so I started chronologically with Might and Magic 1. And I'm coming to find out it's really fun and, uh, like, it's pretty simple, but, I mean, for the time, it, I, I don't know, it's doing as well as it could, I think. Um, the graphics are, like, real crazy bad, but, I don't know, it's one of those, oops, wrong one. It's one of those things where, that's, that's the wrong one, that's something zine. Uh, it's one of the, it's, it's, it's like, uh, kind of like how I would describe Dwarf Fortress, where, like, the graphics are so ambiguous that it doesn't really matter that they're bad, because your imagination does the rest. But anyways, um, part of this video is instructions on, like, how to do certain things like getting it into a windowed mode. And to do that is uh, you go into the shortcut and properties, open file location, just to find where it's located. It's usually located in C program files GOG.com and then this. So let's go into that. And then you go into the specific games folder and scroll down till you find a config file. And you. Where the hell did I go? There we go. Usually it looks like this, uh, but ending in CONF. You double click on that, and then it opens up this thing. Sorry, I'm using two monitors, that's why you didn't see it open up over here right away. And you scroll down to full screen, and that's usually enabled as true for good old games installations. But I like to record my screen, and I find it's easier to record when it's in windowed mode. So I put that to false. So it's just going to pop up in windowed mode by default now. And you scroll down to... Um, cycles was really high, but for this game, it... <clears throat> it doesn't do really well to have high cycles because some of the text that pops up goes too quickly to read. So I lowered it and what else, what else, what else? Um, also the scaler, um, I changed that to three times since it's in window mode, so like for every pixel, there's three pixels, basically, so that it takes up enough of the screen to still be easily visible. So and then you just save, file save, and should be good. And then you just open up. Like that. Yeah, see, I almost did the wrong game again. So. Do, do, do. There we go. And since it's on 90 cycles, this takes forever. You press escape, and I just pressed escape, and it's not doing anything. There we go. It has to finish its thing. And to change the cycles, you'll see up here it's 90. Uh, to change the cycles, you do Control F12 to increase them or control F11 to decrease them. Decreasing is usually set at a lower amount. That's another thing that I changed in the config files is uh, the increase-decrease amount. I forget what that is though. But, uh, but yeah, I usually have it set at 90 for this game. And then I didn't really understand what to do here at first because you can see all the characters and whatever but there's no like start game type of thing so what you really need to do is you have to go to town and the only one that you can visit right off the bat is Sorpigal 
because the other ones um, like don't see any available characters for it and you can't make any so go to town go to Sorpigal which is the one key and then you hold control and select all the people that you want um, well, a couple of these are ones that I created and I already have like a, a set group that I like and uh, and Swifty Sarg actually I got killed somehow. I don't I don't even know how because usually my people just go unconscious. So uh, when you're done picking your party, you can only have six. When you're done, you hit X as you can see there, and you wait for it because it takes a while. Or you could press Control Alt F12, and that speeds up the cycles. Uh, it like unlocks the speed of the cycle so basically that's fast forward for whenever you need to just get on with it and something's going on for a long time so you start here and um, I, I'm looking left back on the right and behind me and it's like whoa what's this but this is like where you start basically so usually it's it asks you this when you go back to the start but when you turn around it's like when you're in this square and facing this direction is when you can interact with the innkeeper basically so it's asking if I want to sign in and that's basically saving is what that equates to only it's 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 not like saving with all your party um, in the order that they're in and whatnot and the grouping it's like every time you save you basically just save the characters stats so you could start back up in whatever arrangement you want and so that's why I kind of like have my arrangement already thought out but anyways I'm going back so that confused me at first I'm like what the hell is this door and where am I but apparently you start out in the inn so everything looks the same so it's like you can't tell that it's an inn really but you keep pressing forward you go past the door and you turn to the left there's the blacksmiths turn left again and that's the inn where you just came from and turn around to the left again and this is where you buy food but uh, I already have all the stuff I need, so I'm just going forward. I've been playing for a while and grinding and whatnot, and my characters are uh, most of them level 2 now. I'm going to do the Q for quick reference, and you'll see that... Um, yeah, I got... Oh, actually, I guess it doesn't show you level here, but they're decent I guess and then one two three four five six for each individual person's detailed stats so yeah um, let's hit escape to get out of there you just go around everything looks the same in whatever level you're on but um, you go certain places and it says that you see certain things because it's uh, leaving a lot to your imagination basically sign above freeze autos training you go in uh, blah 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 do you want training yes and then it shows how much experience points you need for each person when you click through and right now I don't have any that are experienced enough but um, the first time that I got training for like, I don't know, it was like the first three people that got training costed, at, uh, or it cost um, 25 gold and now for some reason it's costing 40 gold. I don't know why that is really. You hit escape and that's another thing that confused me too. It's when you hit escape, when you're done talking to whatever innkeeper, um, shopkeeper, trainer, and you hit escape that keeps you in the same square but it turns you 180 degrees so that you're facing out so you're facing the door that you came in from 
So you just walk out. Uh, usually there's nothing you need to do in that room, so that's just fine. It points you in the direction you need to go, and you go out. Um, sometimes there's stuff inside those rooms that you can still have some some fun with. Like in the temple, I found a um, found a, a little hidden wall area that you can fight a monster. Or so in uh, this is the tavern. So you go in there. Step up to the bar. Yes. And uh, this is where you can get drinks and information. But look at look at how quickly that goes. It's um, listen to rumors. You can barely read that stuff, especially if it's longer than that. So I, you can see my cycle count up here. I usually drop it down to twenty, at least or. Or at most, I should say, since it's low. I usually drop it down to 20 so that I could actually read what's going on. And, yay, great stuff. And tip bartender. There, you can finally read what's going on. Whoops. I tipped him again. I don't care. Listen to rumors. No rumors today. And escape. Um, it should... There we go. See, it's it loads so slowly that I don't want to keep it on 20 cycles all the time. If, if this is as fast as it went for the day that it, that, that it was new, if this is as fast as it went on most computers, people had a lot more patience back then than they do now. Because look at this. This is... Awful. Jeez. So yeah, bump it up to 90 frames or so, and you'll get uh, not like not the quickest amount of play, but I think that's the best balance. Bit. And you find certain things that you can't see, but it says are there, like statues. So use your imagination. So search it. And this is another thing that goes by quickly. It's like, whoa, what the hell was that first comment? And it turns you around. So just turn back around. Search it. And I'm going to drop the cycles down again, if I really care. Yes, search it. Elven Wizard, the plaque reads blah 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 blah. Back up to 90 or so. Okay, and that's basically it. And then you sometimes come across monsters. I'm going to try to provoke that. Usually you find them in. Um, you don't find them as frequently in the corridors. As, as you do um, in little nooks, uh, like you open a door, and if that's a nook, then you find him in there like this. So you open a door, and that's where a monster would be. So let's try on another area. Locked. And I don't have a thief in my party right now, because that's the guy that got killed, Swifty Sarg. Um, so, but he was kind of annoying because he sucked at unlocking shit anyways. So, like, half of the traps would still go off in my face and mildly damage the whole party. So, right now I'm just trying it without a, th uh, a robber, is what they're called in this game. I'm trying it without one of those at all, which you could do. It's just more risky, and you just bash instead. And it looks like it worked, but there's nothing in here. You can press S to search, but I haven't found any use for that, unless it's after killing something. Locked. Bash. 
No, nothing in here. So, yeah, if, if anyone knows for a, a use for that, at, uh, other than after killing something, let me know, because I haven't found it yet. I don't think there is. Oh, I'm trying to unlock. Bash. Yep, see, and when you spring a trap, that's another thing that goes by real quick. So here is an encounter. Uh, so let's attack, because I don't think that it will be bribed. And what I like to do is I have my party set up so that the strong people, um, melee people, can be in the front. The people with archery capability, but also melee, if need be, they can be in the middle. And the people that you don't want doing any real combat, typically, I put those in the back because it's less often that they are actually able to be hit and uh, no need for them to do ranged attacks and you need like a cleric and a wizard most of the time I mean it helps so that's why I have my people this lady and this guy in the back and so my wizard guy is the fastest so he usually goes first and uh, I'm gonna have him cast sleep I forget if these creatures are affected by it though. I know the sprite is not, but hopefully these guys are. So I look at the manual, which comes with the game, if you get it from GOG.com, and you scroll all the way down. That's the thing about this game is that you need to kind of use a manual. It'd be really hard to play without it, because a lot of the things you just would not understand. We have, like, in-game tutorials nowadays, but way back when this was made, manuals were something that people actually used. So, uh, what was I doing? I was going to cast Sleep, and that would be spell level 1 for a sorcerer, and number 8, and up to 5 monsters, it makes them fall asleep. So that they won't attack all at once. So 1-8. Cast on A to E. Doesn't matter which one you hit, I don't think. It will just cast on five creatures. Uh, I think if, if you have a creature list beyond E, then you could specify, like, if you hit B, and then it'll go from B to F. I think that's how it works. But I haven't really come across that many yet because I haven't gotten that far in the game yet and good slither beasts can be put to sleep and so now my archer lady is uh, going to attack and you hit S to use um, ranged and C to shoot at the one that was not asleep because I like to get that one since it is going to attack me if I don't kill it. Um, and so now my fighter, so you can see there it's his turn, and he can try to get the sprite. So fight, because I want to specify which one to fight, D. And I don't know what that said because I wasn't paying attention. But it probably said that I missed. Um, so Serena is my healer, or cleric I mean. And, let's see, quick reference. My guys don't have uh, enough for her, her heal spell to do much of anything really. So, because the heal spell um, heals 8 points and they are not 8 points shy of anything. So, it would be a waste. You could do things like bless, but I don't know. Maybe that, maybe that'll be worth it. Let's do that. So cast, and I memorized this, but you can see it in the manual too. It's level one, spell two, and it increases the accuracy of the characters. And I think that might be necessary because the sprite does this curse thing, 
And I think that that messes up your accuracy. So this might counteract that a bit. At least enough to let us kill it. <clears throat> so, let's fight. D! Fight D! And you miss it because those bastards are hard. And cast one four, which is the fireball. And I, I think that one has a, a better chance of hitting sprites for some reason. And one of the slither beasts woke up. But I'm really concentrating on the sprite because I press P. Oh, it did already curse me. Negative one though. That's not that bad. But uh, if it curses me any worse, then that would suck. So let's kill the sprite as quickly as we can. And my guy's not unhealthy enough yet to use cure, so let's just block. Because that basically wastes my turn unless they try to hit me, in which case, I, I don't know, I, th I think that it makes it less damaging or something. Fight. D. Um, fight D. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. Cast one four. And I usually don't use this much magic with the wizard. Not affected. Fuck. But this guy, I really hate sprites. When you're starting out, sprites are a pain in the ass. I mean, unless there's something I'm missing, I just have a horrible time with sprites. Let's check again. Still pretty healthy. Uh, it's a block. Fight D. Fight D. Ugh. There we go, Slither Beast. Fucked my guy up. Yes! Yes! Okay. So. Let's see, whatever. Fight C. Cast. Who was it that got hit? That was Mongo. Cast. 1 4. Because that's the heal spell for clerics. On character 1, which is Mongo. Okay. Fight C. Fight. See? Oh, son of a bitch. Sir Galland. Okay, he's not dead, he's just unconscious. Really don't know what causes people to be dead yet. Or if they can be brought back. But, uh, this is the wizard. Block. Shoot, see. These leather beasts suck. Just cured Sir Galland. See. There we go. I'm getting tired of this, so I'm just going to use magic on him. Get him out of there as fast as I can. This guy's still asleep.
<sighs> Craig the heck. Craig can use some healing. And whenever you get to whenever you get down to one enemy, it just automatically fights whatever's on the screen so you don't have to pick. So that's why it's one keystroke now. That's the entire victory song. And after like a really intense battle, that actually is... I, I'm just like nodding to the song because I'm so pleased with myself. Uh, but yeah. Just one of those small things. Small reward for... Oh, fuck. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to search. But luckily it didn't screw me over like it usually does. Um, so, detect magical trap. If you have any spell points, you can do that with your wizard. But it's one of those things that goes by real quick, so I'm going to drop my cycle count down. So who will try? Well, the wizard. I don't know who else would be able to do it. Trapped and magicked. Yes. And I don't know how to stop it from blowing up in my face, usually. The thief doesn't really have... or the robber. The robber doesn't really do a good job, usually. So, whatever. And, uh, find, remove, trap. I guess, the wizard? Or a sorcerer? I, I get the names wrong all the time. Swarm of poisonous darts. Oh no. Yay, two gems. And it said one gold? That's... Usually means one gold per person. So... I always just... Gather the gold onto my main character. So, like, hit this G gather button, two for gold, and then you see all the gold end up in here, because it was on the other characters, it would be one gold there, one gold there. So, yeah. it's um, basically it. Let's see, ah, oh, fuck. Fucking hate getting poisoned. I don't know of any way to cure poisoning other than going to the temple. And that shit is annoying. So let's go to the temple. Oops, passed it up. Oh. Ah, oh, fuck you. Retreat. Okay, so I was able to retreat and got me back to the inn. But I'm just going to go to the temple. So hopefully I don't hit that creature again. Now, I know where I'm going, but... That's mostly because I have a map pre-done. Well, yeah, now I really look like... I know where I'm going, I'm facing walls. But anyways, I know where I'm going. Because I have a map that was provided with the game from GOG.com. Now I seem like a big time advertisement for GOG.com. That's because I like it. Do you seek our help? Yes. And you see, and here is where the encounter is. You just go through that wall, and there might be some enemies to fight. So, restore health. I forget who it is that is poisoned, but that seems to cure them. So, let's see, it is Mongo. Is it? Yeah, Mongo. I just went out, so let's go back in. Mongo! Restore health! So 
let's see. Yep, no condition anymore. He's just good. Uh, okay. I forgot that I'm still in here. But now's a good time to show you. Um, oh, I, I turned, but I didn't realize it because it looked the exact same. So this is that um, wall that I was pointing out. I'm going to walk through it. Encounter! But that was just to demonstrate, so I'm retreating. I'm back at the end. Whoops. And if you press enter, that actually walks you forward. Um, and I think backspace walks you backward. So I'm used to like pressing enter whenever I get a message, because that's usually what you do in games, but in this case, it makes you go forward instead. It's like, yes, we know that you got the message, you don't have to dismiss it. Just do what you're going to do. It's basically what you need to do, so I'm doing that. Go through the door. Go forward again, and you save. And I've never, I've never gotten an encounter while inside the inn, so I'm not sure if I really need to save first. But it seems like a good idea. And then rest. And that's what I do. No encounters. And now all my people are healthy. And they have their spell points. So you turn back around. And now I want to save again. Because now I know that I rested and did so successfully. And it takes... I'm showing you how long it takes at 90 cycles if you don't do the fast forward key. So that's how long it takes. Um, but yeah, I usually get bored and I just do control alt F12 to speed it through. So yeah. And that's about it. There's um... I don't know what this place is good for. It's just there's these three little alcoves but I've never found anything in them, so it seems just like a decorative waste of time. But anyways, um, let's retreat. Actually, I'm kind of curious to see what Surrender does. I've never tried that. But let's go forward, forward. Show you where the stairs down are. This way, going forward through here has you out to the outside, but that's monsters there are too strong for low level characters. So this way is stairs down into the caverns below, and I think that's really where you're intended to spend the rest of your, like, where you're intended to go next. So, and I'm showing you how long it takes without speeding it up. So this is like loading the level basically and you end up in darkness so you have to either have a torch which you could hit the U key and then use the torch and that lights up the area or you can do basically the same thing with the wizard without using up an item you're just using up a spell point you go into the wizard's sheet and you hit C for cast and 1, 6 is the number for the light spell, I think. Hit enter to cast. And now you can see! And move around even, and it stays with you, I think, for the whole day. And this grate is usually locked. But um, one of the rumors in the bar was that you meet a person in the cavern below at coordinates 1, one 2, I think. So I guess that's X1, Y2 on a typical graph is how the coordinates are placed. So 0, 0 is at the bottom left, and then it goes up from there. Um, so the X is being the horizontal plane, Y being the vertical plane. And uh, so yeah, 
you go through this gate by either bashing it or unlocking it and there's corridors through there with enemies and stuff and I haven't gotten there yet to fight the person because I'm I'm still having trouble with those guys and they keep poisoning me so I need to figure out what to do with poison so that I'm not spending $25 every time I know that there's a cleric level 4 spell that cures poison but that's a long way away from getting that because my cleric is only level 2 and I can't even use the level 2 cleric spells that's not the cleric this is the cleric I'm level 2 but I can't use the level 2 cleric spells yet because I guess it's not based on your cleric level or something I don't know um, because you could type in spell level 1 and then whatever number but when you try and type in spell level 2 nope can't even type it in it's like you suck so I don't know um I don't I don't recall seeing anything in the manual about when you get spell levels or wait is it gonna tell me right now I'm gonna pause Okay, I'm a, I'm a dumb fuck because it does say in the manual that you get it every other experience level. So, apparently, I will be getting a level 2 cleric spell thing um, sheet once I get to level 3, I'm guessing. So that would allow me to have these things, but... The closest thing to anything to do with poison is protection from poison. So, I mean, that's kind of good. That, but, uh, I need some way to actually cure it without spending 25 gold. So, kind of pissed about that. So, anyways, um, that's all I have to give you right now. I don't know what all those statues do in the upper level, in the town level of Sorpagal. Um, other than, I guess, they um, hint at plot points. Maybe that's all they do. But, yeah. Oh, um, actually, there is a little bit more. In that blacksmith area that you found um, to the left as you exit the inn, you could buy weapons, things like torches, which would be miscellaneous items, or armor, which would be shield and chain mail and whatnot. Um, plate mail, I actually found this plate mail here um, when I was battling monsters. Um, but yeah, you E to equip it when it's in your backpack, E and then whatever you equip it ends up here and it depends on the class that you have what you'll be able to use so like um, the clue book which also has the maps that's what will tell you what the difference is between the items are so there we go. Okay, that's a little easier. Items, items, items. Here we go. So, for reference, when you're buying stuff or equipping things to see which is better, since it doesn't really tell you in the game, look it up here. And I'm not sure, like, I might, I might have read it correctly or incorrectly, but I think the first number is the random amount of damage that you'll do using the weapon, like the base damage. So 1 to 4 for any regular person using the weapon. And the next number, I believe, is the plus amount. So like I, I believe it's the plus amount. So like, instead of 1 to 4, be 2 to 5. But I'm not sure. Uh, please comment if that's incorrect. 
because it's it was a little confusing the way it explained in the part here. But anyways, that's all I know to say right now. So I might have another video, but uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you play this game. If it's not too outdated seeming to you, because I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. Bye.